Hey friends, Tasha here with Stardust Gold Crochet. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I do crochet tutorials and also podcasts. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this cute coffee mug koozie. Cozy, koozie, I'm not really sure how to say that. I say koozie. Um, I created this for my mom for Mother's Day and it was kind of on the fly and I modified this version just a little bit because I thought this was a little too tall because how are you supposed to put your lips right there, right? <laughs> I mean, it'll keep your coffee really snug and warm though, right? It's so cute though, I still love it. Um, so I modified the design slightly from what I'm gonna call the prototype. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Also hit the little notification button so you'll be notified of all my future video tutorials. What you'll need for this tutorial is two skeins of a three weight yarn. I'm using Sheepy Stonewashed, Sheepy Stonewashed in two different colors. So we're going to actually use two strands together. You'll need scissors and a measuring tape and a five millimeter crochet hook. Now the prototype I used a 5.5 and it's just a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be. So you can go down a hook size, you can even go down two hook sizes if you wanted to, to get the desired uh, circumference and width that you want. So this is what it looks like unfolded. Kind of looks like a bottle. And I worked the stitch from the bottom up and then worked around and then added the button. So it's super easy. You can work it up in just a couple of hours and it's really fun. So let's get started. First, I have a question. What do you think about this backdrop? To start, we're gonna work a foundation single crochet row. So you create a slip knot. Check out the foundation single crochet tutorial if you wanna get more familiar with it. You can always do a chain 11 and then do a single crochet row starting in the second chain from the hook. But I like to use a foundation single crochet because it's a lot easier. So you do your slip knot and then we're going to chain two. Insert your hook into that very first chain, yarn over, pull up. Then yarn over, pull through the first loop, grab onto those bottom two, yarn over, pull through both. We're gonna do that 10 times for the second stitch, you insert your hook into the bottom two, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through once, then yarn over and pull through both. So there we have two foundation single crochets. So I'm gonna keep working that until I have 10. And this is where you can modify it. 10 will be 10 wide. So if you want a skinnier, mug you can do that too it'll change up a little bit of the pattern when you get to this point it'll change this up a little bit but not by much i think i'm almost there two four six eight nine yep almost there we got one more stitch Okay, here's our 10. For row two, chain two, turn your work, and then do a double crochet into the very first stitch. And this is gonna be an up and down stitch. So we're gonna do a repeat, double crochet, single crochet, across. So we did our single, and now we're doing a double crochet then a single crochet and a double crochet. Single crochet, double, single, double, And one last single crochet into the very last stitch. Chain two, turn, and we repeat the same. We do a double crochet and a single crochet and repeat that across. You repeat row two 
until you reach 27 rows or your desired length. So here I have about 27 rows and it measures the same as my other piece here. 4, 5, 26, 27, 28, 29. So using the smaller hook, I did 29 rows. Using the 5.5 millimeter hook and the larger one, this would be for a big mug, this is 27 rows. Once you get your project to the desired height you'd like, you wanna make sure your right side is up facing you. The way to figure that out is you can always just look at your tail. Usually if your tail is off to the right, that's your right side facing you. So we're gonna count three stitches in, one, two, three, insert your hook there, attach your yarn, pull through, chain one. I usually drop my tail, sometimes I do it, but I find it like creates a bit of a thickness there that I don't like. So we chain one, insert into the same stitch and do a single crochet. Then we do a double crochet in the next stitch, single crochet, and you repeat that to double crochet, single crochet. So we repeat double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet. So you repeat that two times and then work a double crochet in the next stitch. So here you'll have two, four, six stitches. And for the next row, rows 29 to 32, chain one, turn, single crochet one, and then double crochet one. So we single crochet, then double crochet. single crochet and double crochet. Single and the last stitch is a double crochet. So you repeat that. So we do three more rows with this pattern of chaining one, single crochet, one, double crochet one, single crochet one, double crochet, single, and double. Oh, I'm getting tangled. Okay, so come back when you hit your row 32 and then I'll show you how to do the border. All right, I did my 32 up to 32 rows. So go ahead and turn it or slip stitch into the next two stitches. So we're gonna start with this very first stitch and then we're gonna slip stitch into the next one. And now we're creating this little loop on top right here. Then we're gonna chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna skip two of these stitches and then we'll slip stitch into the next two. Of course you can add any kind of buttonhole you want, but this is a really easy buttonhole. And then you just continue to work around without cutting your yarn. So we're going to work the border we're gonna do a half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet into this corner stitch right here. Half double crochet yarning over. So we do half double crochet, chain one, and half double crochet. And then we're gonna half double crochet in each of the rows around And it kind of just put your hook wherever you can find a space. Try to make it even so you can see, you can kind of just get them in there where you want. You can also weave these in. You can carry them 
like that so it's a lot easier to have your tails already there so we're just going to keep doing a half double crochet even when it comes to this little corner here you just kind of work it into the corner and up and around I am going to definitely hold these together and work in those tails as I'm going but when you reach the corners each of the corners this corner this corner this corner and when you come back around to this corner and that corner you're going to work a half double crochet chain one half double crochet so here I'm reaching this corner here I'm going to do half double crochet chain one half double crochet in that corner then I'm going to continue working into each row end all the way around okay so here you can see it's starting to take shape I actually really like the bottom side or the what's considered the back side because it has just this really nice um, kind of almost like a woven look to it right there but as you can see I chose the right side so I'm gonna keep going and I want you to keep going and then when you're finished I'll show you how to do the surface stitch and where to attach your buttons and then you go ahead and pull it out then when you weave in this tail what I did was I kind of just brought it over this way so it kind of closed it off and made it look pretty and kind of match the other side so, all right there we have the entire bottle <laughs> it looks just like a bottle so doing a surface stitch I used one complementary color so you can choose blue or white or whatever color you want to use for your surface stitch and of course you're going to weave in all the tails so let's see what blue I think white would look a lot prettier because it would be more complementary, um, more contrasting, I should say. So let's use white. I'm not sure if you're familiar with what a surface stitch is, but a surface stitch is where you take your yarn and you just run it along with your hook from the bottom to the top. You're gonna to make a slip knot with your yarn like this. And then you're going to take your hook out and you want to find you can basically put your hook in anywhere you want I ran my surface stitch along the edge of my half double crochet stitch border so I'm going to start in this corner over here because it's just easier so you want to find a place that corner stitch there insert your hook from the top to the bottom Add your slip knot and you hold the bottom like this and just kind of like you're doing a regular crochet stitch and just pull through that loop all the way to the top like that but you want to keep the knot and everything kind of down below now surface stitches are about tension um, you don't want to make them too tight because if you make it too tight it's going to bunch your work up so just it's kind of like being a sewing machine you know stick your hook through grab that yarn pull it up and pull it through your loop on your on the surface and then you just repeat that all the way down inserting your what I did was insert it into the base of each of my half double crochet stitches. And you'll, you'll feel the little holes um, if you can't see them very well because of the yarn. And you want to kind of pull this loop up on top just a little bit so that you don't get too tight. And surface stitches are great because you can basically do and shape shape them however you want to shape them so that's how it is looking so far 
So you're going to work that surface stitch all the way around. And when you come back to the beginning, you're going to work it straight across and meet it up here and I'll show you how to tie it. Okay, when I got around to the front here, I got a little bit higher and then just going straight across to kind of match it, match it up with the other side. So when you get to the beginning again, you work your hook straight back into that very first, where your very first stitch is. Just grab it and pull it through and then cut your yarn there and pull it through and then you weave in your tails all right there it is there is the finished almost finished coffee koozie so at this point you can grab your mug and say oh does it fit does it fit or even before that you could say does it fit you probably want to test it before but yep that'll be perfect okay so for the button you want to figure out where you want to put your button I put mine right about there, and these buttons I got in a bag from Michaels. Um, I really like them, I think they're great. And they measure about, let's see, this measures just a little over an inch wide, which is perfect. Of course, if you go, you can do a smaller button or a bigger button, you just wanna make sure your button will fit through your little hole that you made. Now, those will stretch, so doing six chains, whoop, <laughs> doing six chains will most definitely work for you. You can use your thread. Um, I could, I used white. It's hard to get needles that are um, big. If you need to widen the holes, oops. If you need to widen the holes, you can use a little awl to make your holes bigger. That works too. All right, everybody. Happy crocheting. I hope you had a good time and I hope you learned something new, especially with the surface stitch. These, this pattern is available for free on my blog and I will leave the link down in the description below along with um, all the yarn colors and everything that I use. That will actually, that'll all be on the blog. So I really hope you enjoyed it. So check out my other videos. Thanks for being here everybody. Happy crocheting.